everyone. I think we're live. How are you guys doing? Anna's here and it's Wednesday. And playing a little music for you. Can you hear it? I hope you can. Hi Jim, thanks for joining me. I know you were waiting for my for many days. Hi. Hi guys, thanks for hopping on. When you're here, please let me know you're here so I can see. Say hello. And so I'm playing the song for you. This is actually, you can look it up. It's, um, it's a song by a Moldavian group um, called Maya He. So check it out. It's a couple years old. I don't usually listen to this music, but I feel like it's a pretty engaging song. So how is everybody? Hi, Timberly. Thanks for joining. When you guys are here, please let me know. Say hi. So, we are getting into our money date, and that's what we do here on Wednesdays. Hi there, good to have you. A money date, why do I wanna get together, turn this down, why do I wanna get together with you on money dates? This is something that I've been doing myself, by myself, for quite some time, and finally one day I said, okay, it's enough. I wanna figure out how to empower you to be better with your finances and share with you some of the ideas and tips I practice on a weekly basis, right, or on a monthly basis. So this is an interesting time of the month because it's the beginning of the month and this is where my money date comes into force uh, full speed ahead. Um, tonight, Yuri and I, I will be sitting down because usually once a week I check in with myself uh, and just kind of make sure that our system is flowing. Thanks for sharing, Jim. Um, but tonight, because it's the beginning of the month and that's when we pay all of our expenses or, or make sure, because expenses are paid on autopilot. I don't have to worry about any of that. But the idea is that you have a system that allows you to you know, virtually not pay as much attention to it as most people do and not stress out. Even today, this morning, I had a, um, a call with a client and you know the frustration that I could hear in his voice was, well, it's just overwhelming. And so the way that he's treating his whole personal finance operation system is um, avoiding. He, says, he just simply said, you know, Anna, I can't deal with it, and I'm just going to avoid it. Well, I, I mean, that's one way to do it, but sooner or later you'll have to face things. The money date came out of the idea is that I want to be able to track things passively and. If you're joining me for the first time, thanks Jody for joining. Here's what we accomplish in a money date. There's a couple of things that we do, but the most important thing is to check in with yourself. And there are three questions that I want you to ask yourself. And if this is your first time starting out here, every Wednesday we come back and ask the same three questions. And they are, how much money did you earn in the last week? And for some of us, like Jim and I are, depending on how many clients we have, right Jim? And um, therefore, our income changes based on that. Uh, for some of you who have businesses, right, or work for, the, for, for yourself, that's also one of those variables that um, gets adjusted. So knowing what kind of income stream and when it comes in is very important. So that's number one. Number two is how much money did you actually spend over the last week, right? And I am planning to launch another uh, boot camp for the money flow system in the next couple of days, probably next week, still figuring out some dates. But that's where we go into more details about what's actually happening with your system. How are your bills paid? Where everybody's, um, is, it, where's everything located? Do you have auto pays um, in place? And so forth. But at least at the very minimal, if you're not participating in that just yet, know how much money did you spend because it's much easier to keep track of smaller chunks and i mean weekly expenditures versus monthly expenditures because when the months go by and you haven't really done much with your system you know how are you going to how are you going to know that you're not doing well or how are you going to know that you're doing well and how are you going to catch up and the last one is the savings so how much did you actually save thanks for joining um, Jane, good to have you here. Let me know when you're here. Say hello um, in the chat. 
So how much money did you actually save? We have savings goals, right? We as financial planners, Jim, we give savings goals to our clients. We as individuals have savings goals ourselves as well. But again, I like the idea of knowing what it is on a weekly basis so that you can track your progress. Because if you can make adjustments, for example, let's say you had more business coming this week, or you had more clients, or you want a contract, perhaps you can adjust your savings goal. So that's the fir very first thing we start here on a money date. Now, I'm gonna take a step back because I actually like um, to start on a positive note, and so I wanted to share a quote with you uh, before we get into discussing the main topic of um, what I wanted to talk to you about, which is rich habits. There's a book out there that I just checked out and it looks pretty interesting. And I wanted to discuss with you because normally we talk about financial concepts here, but I think these habits are just as equally important to incorporate in our daily lives because they lead us to making better choices they lead us to being better in better relationships with our finances. So here's my quote. I actually have this quote in my, in my bio, but it says, we are what we repeatedly do. Excellence is not an act, it's a habit. So this is a quote by Aristotle. I read this a couple times um, a week, if not more, just to kind of remind me because we get carried away with life and work and family and obligations. And, and I think Jim can attest to this, but if you don't have good habits that are surrounding you on a daily basis, how can, you see, how can you see yourself successful in any area of your life, right? Today we talk about finances, right? That's what this show is about. But think about it. Um, so developing habits and once you cross that line where you don't even think about it, like brushing your teeth or eating breakfast in the morning um, or you know just come up with whatever it is that you don't even think those effortless tasks and activities that's the success that I'm talking about but a lot of times and particularly with finances it takes a lot of work right to develop those habits now the book that I wanted to discuss with you today is called rich habits Daily Success Habits of Wealthy Individuals. And uh, this guy, his name is Tom Corey. So he spent five years studying 233 wealthy individuals and 100, I think, 80 poor individuals and really looking at what their daily activities and their um, habits were. And then sort of comparing and contrasting to conclude that there are seven habits that I wanna go through with you um, just kind of discuss what the book is what he's pointing out in the book But also I've got some of my own things that I'm doing so I thought I'd share this with you now before we jump into the Actual discussion of the topic if you if you're here and haven't said hello I'd like you to send me a note in the chat now something else. I do here as well. Hi Wanda. Hi Jane Thanks for joining something else. I do um, here on money dates as well is I'm all about positive, right? Having positive attitude and sharing your positive wins. So something I call a money win. A money win, it's, it's just something I actually came up with on my own because I wanted to look at my own life, right? At my own achievements, at my own failures and give myself an analysis, right? Or pause and think about what has been good. Because if we don't focus on the good, how can we see where we can need to improve? So I call this a money win, right? So I invite you uh, to share in the chat with me some of your money wins, right? And I usually ask you to do this once a week. Now, I've, um, and I'll share this as we get into the habits, but it actually took, takes a little bit of time to think about what has been good with, with you, with your finances, right? So I'm trying to kind of for you to start thinking and appreciating what's going on um, around your week. So think back, you know what I actually do? I pull up, I had my calendar here out and I looked at, at my calendar. It's mostly work calendar, um, obviously has some personal activities and I'm trying to think what was the highlight of my week? What was something that I was proud? Did I have a good, did I have a good interaction with the client? Did I have a good interaction with a team member? Um, did, um, did I you know, have a savings goal that I achieved? It, it could be anything as long as you recognize and think of it as a positive 
note to give yourself um, a sort of you know pat on the back. So my uh, money win for the week was it's a it, it's an interesting one. So we took a day well t took a day and a half off kind of because because Jim and I worked on Saturday, <laughs> right, Jim? So um, Yuri and I went to uh, Napa Valley. We live in Silicon Valley, uh, Silicon Valley, San Francisco Bay Area. So it's really close for us to drive. But I found myself because I said, okay, we need to take a day and a half or two days off, completely recharge, no work. Well, interesting enough that, uh, so Sunday was a day off, we left early, fairly early in the morning, and then we came back Monday afternoon. Well, by Monday morning, I was ready to go. I've, I've recharged what I needed to recharge, I completely disconnected, and mon Monday morning is normally, we would have to come to the office. Hi, Carrie, thanks for joining. I was feeling that I needed to work and accomplish something other than just being out there in the Napa Valley. So that's my money win. But this is just one example because, again, as we get into these habits, you'll start seeing that the reason I was feeling that way um, and actually uh, started to feel a bit uh, restless towards the middle of the day is because it didn't have my routine down. Again, as, as you get to develop these habits for yourself, um, how can you stay on track? Because that helps you get closer to your goals. So you're here, type in the chat, what are some of the money wins that you can think about that were good? Or maybe there was something that was not as good and you wanna work on improving it. And anytime during this uh, discussion, if you find something valuable I shared with you, I would appreciate if you shared with the world, let them know, let them know what to look for, that's um, the best compliment you can give me. So let's get into, um, let's, let's, let me just make sure I can see who's here. Okay, cool. Um, and I'm not missing your comments, but let me make sure, um, there you go. Okay, uh, let's, hi there. Hi, Ranel, thanks for joining. Um, let's get into these habits. So the book we're talking about, for those of you who just hopped on, um, is called Rich Habits, Daily Success Habits, by wealthy individuals. It's uh, by uh, Tom Corey, okay? So there's um, seven of habits that I wanna go through with you. Compare and contrast, and actually, hi Brian, thanks for joining. And actually give some of my way into some of the things, because I am practicing some of the things. I was actually pleasantly surprised. I don't have the book um, in my library. I actually have quite a few books in the back, um, but this is one of those books that I don't own just yet, okay? So here we go. All right, number one habit is exercise. And how do you think that ties into being financially and wealthy successful? Well, as we all know, and I'm not getting into the whole exercise, some of you are a lot more educated on this topic than I am, but I know for sure that at least, right, on a daily basis, if you can get 30 minutes of moderate activity into your day. That changes a whole, it's like there's a whole chemical uh, change that happens. And that's one of the things that happened to me on Monday is that I didn't have my run in. I usually run in the morning and I was feeling just out of place. So it's some of the things that um, these, uh, from the, um, from the study that this guy did, who wrote the book, he talked about that wealthy individuals, right, who have positive habits exercise at least 30 minutes a day four times a week now I do I usually run yes exercise is definitely uh, is a must so I usually run in the morning if I can't get to the gym and then I've really been bad about this but yoga has been something that I've practiced for years but I kind of dropped the ball over the last I don't know six months or so maybe even maybe even less than that I hope I haven't been counting so I want to get back to that doing yoga in the morning but here's what it provides for me and I want you to think about and if you're you know struggling with getting back why don't you think about the benefits the benefits is, is definitely relating to having more mental clarity I have more energy oh my gosh I can I can you know conquer the world when I come back energized and exercise I have better mood so don't you guys want to have those feelings I'm sure you do okay now habit number two building relationships and I think that for those of us um, in professional services, and even, in, not even that, in um, anywhere in the world you go, relationships is everything, right? It's the people that you surround yourself with, the network and connections that you have, 
that can get you much, much further in anything that you want. And so the question I have for you, right, even here on Facebook, right, I don't know how you use Facebook or any other social media channels. And maybe it's not, maybe it's just like my neighbors down, uh, you know, uh, in, in my office building. How are you connecting and who are you connecting with on a daily basis? Because think about that. You never know who you're gonna meet. You never know how this person can impact your life and you definitely never know what, what this relation can, relationship can bring for you. So, um, and you know, one of the things that a lot of our uh, financial planning clients ask um, is like, well, when you, when you prepare their financial statement, they worry about or they c are concerned to, to know how are they doing compared to everybody else. Like, what is my net worth? And I always answer that question with a bit of a smile on my face and say, well, it's kind of subjective because I'd rather you think of your net worth is more of what you're, not in terms of you know dollars and savings in your investment and accounts and what you know assets you've accumulated, but the type of network, the type of connections you have, because that can get you much much further sometimes in life than than actual um, assets and savings that you've got. Okay, so think about that, right? How what are you doing on a daily basis? And this is again as we're talking about these habits, this is something that I think all of us can improve on accomplishing these things on a daily basis. It needs to be effortless, okay? Number three, visualizing your goals. Hi, Les, thanks for joining. Good to have you here. You guys are awesome. Type in, in the chat that you're here and say hello. Um, okay, so day, visualizing daily, daily goals, okay? Now, I, I have a, a, quite a bit of a different practice, not quite visualizing, but what I do is that I write my goals twice a day. Okay, I have a notebook, like a spiral notebook that um, I uh, carry, well, either carry with me or I have it at home on my nightstand. And so the first thing in the morning when I wake up, I write my goals. And then the last thing before I go to bed, I write my goals. Now, this is something that I've been doing for quite some time, and I learned this from uh, one of my mentors. Um, his name is Grant Cardone, who highly advocates for having your goals written down we practice something like this in financial planning. Every financial plan we put together for our clients, we write down their goals. Because if you do not write your goals, right, then they're not real goals. They're just wishes, they're things like, oh, I wish I could do that, I wish I could do this. But when they're very specific and are written down and then you're repeating that on a daily or almost in my case, twice a day, then things become real, right? Because there, there's changes that happen in your mind and the focus that you have because days could get crazy right you can get distracted with everything but if you can begin your day and end your day on that positive note then imagine how much more you can accomplish now something else that besides goals and goals typically the way that I approach them have to be huge they have to be unattainable something that you just are excited first of all about but it's, it is so far out of your reach that you're gonna you know, figure out and work hard to achieve them. But in order to get there, right, let's take some baby steps. And so I also write down targets, okay? Targets are smaller goals. I think of those um, as just sort of chopping up a big goal into smaller chunks that, uh, that you're gonna focus on. The targets could be more of a three months target. So the, my latest, um, activity that been, has been helpful is to focus on the 90-day runs, right? This is from actually what I learned from one of my other mentors, Danelle Delgado. So because you, everybody can focus on something for 90 days, okay? So targets could be centered around those activities or tasks for the next 90 days, okay? Now, number four habit that Corey is talking about is reading, okay? Now, this is, um, and there's some statistics that I found, but for example, Grant ad advocates that, uh, or suggests that CEO, uh, CEOs on average read 60 books per year. I don't know exactly if that's how many books I read. I'm gonna start sort of be, being more cognizant of, about it, but it's definitely more than the average American, which is only one book per year. And so what I found to be more practical for me Reading is fine, and I do a lot of reading for uh, you know, business development, personal finance, 
uh, personal development. It's kind of like all over uh, the place, not really, not a lot of, you know, fiction reading or something for fun. Actually, I even tried, <laughs> we went, when we, uh, Yuri and I went to Hawaii a couple of weeks ago, I bought a book and I said, I'm not going to read any business related books or anything like that. And I, you know, I barely opened it. We all didn't have enough time. That was one thing, but I barely got into reading the book. I just like, I couldn't focus my mind on just not thinking about some of the things, some of the goals that I had in place, which I guess, you know, that's one, one thing to work on. Hi, Tam, uh, Tammy. Thanks for joining. So what I found to be useful for me in this, in this area is, Every day, again, I'm trying to develop these habits that I can kind of just work into my schedule, work into my routine and not have to think about. Um, I know I have to read, right? That's one of the things that just kind of have to stay. As financial planners, we have to be staying on the top of all the things that are going on, but also for personal development. So 30 minutes per day is, is the time that I allow. And usually at this point, it's happening in the evening, right? Right before I go to bed, try to put a computer away. Um, so it could be reading a book. It could be actually listening to a podcast. I've recently just started listening to more podcasts. I, for some reason, that's just a, not a, a practical way for me to retain information, but I'm becoming better. So I, perhaps I can transition to listening to books. And I know Jim, if you're still listening, I uh, I did hook you up with, uh, is it Audible? Yeah, Audible. And I know Yuri uh, constantly uh, listens to books on tapes. So everybody can find 30 minutes a day. It, it doesn't even have to be a specific time you sit down. Anytime you're driving to the office or go and pick up your kids or uh, unfortunately my commute or not unfortunately. <laughs> um, my commute is very short. Um, so, cause I live really close to my office and, uh, that does not allow me enough time to read or listen to anything. So, and, and another, another way to advance my knowledge is not just reading uh, or listening. I actually, for example, training, right? Is there a skill that you're trying to improve, right? Are you, do you, as an advisor, do you want to be more knowledgeable? Oh my gosh. For example, <laughs> hi Ken, thanks for joining. For example, today I was, um, listening to a workshop on student loans, right? There's a lot of information that I need to learn and understand so I can better advise clients, but that's something that I can do a little bit at a time, right? Or for example, sales training, right? Can Grant Cardone's uh, uh, university uh, for sales training. So something like that, you could do 30 minutes a day just to get you further ahead, okay? So for those of you who are joining, hi Greg, thanks so much, we're talking about uh, seven habits of wealthy individuals that they developed and practice on a daily basis. Okay. Now, uh, habit number five is to practice affirmations. Okay. Now this is something that I, and I think I have a book here in my office somewhere. I'm sure I do. Um, affirmations is something that I first time, uh, became familiar with when I attended Tony Robbins seminar. And this was a couple of years ago and that was great. Um, but I found something else that actually works a little bit better. And affirmations are things like you need to recognize that, you know, because a lot of times the issues that we're facing, whether it has to do with finances or personal um, development relationships, has to do with the lack of self-esteem, right? It's the belief in yourself. So affirmations are things that helping you feel better about yourself. And Tony is big on that. I'm, I'm nowhere near to teach this topic, but where I found a sort of an, a little bit of an angle on that is gratitude. And this is something that I've learned from Danelle. And so what I do on top of writing goals daily, um, at night, right before I go to bed, I write 10 things that I'm grateful for. And believe it or not, you might think that it's really easy to do, and when I look back at my notes and say, okay, well, you know, I definitely can spit out five things I'm grateful for, right? I'll just give you some examples. You know, my family, right? My, my husband, my business, my colleagues. So there's a lot of things I can just kind of like whoosh, it's out there. But then you sit down and you think, okay, well, those are the things that are sort of normal and standard. But look back at your day and how, how has that been good? And this is coming back to what I was talking to you about earlier. What are some of the wins that you have, right? What has been good? So that's kind of changed my you know, perspective on things a little bit um, over the last 
So let's say I started with gratitude for sure. This is my second 90 day run. Um, I'm about in the middle, maybe 45 days into second. So it's been some time. Um, and looking back, I can even look back at my notes and see what kind of mood I was in that evening, right? Was I happy? Was I, because it really sort of being reflected in, into what I wrote. So I hope you can adopt some of those things to get yourself into a better place. Now, habit number six is volunteering. And I know that a lot of you guys here, my, my financial planner friends, we do a lot of that, okay? And so here's an interesting statistic that Corey found that 72% of individuals, of wealthy individuals that he interviewed and um, studied for the five year uh, timeline that he had, on average, spend five hours a week volunteering. And I, you know, a lot of times, and this is an interesting question that comes up a lot in financial planning, but we ask clients as we prepare their spending plan, um, are you making any donations? You know, what are your charitable contributions? And sometimes, you know, some people do, and I mean, there's no judgment on our part at all. It's really a personal decision, but um, sometimes people say, well, you know, instead of donating uh, money or making contributions, I'm spending time uh, volunteering, uh, spending my time volunteering, doing some activities. So, so think about what can you do? It doesn't have to be five hours a week. Maybe for some of you, it's an overkill. But is there something you can do that's gonna, you know, help other people? Whatever the cause and the passion you have. Um, so that's that was interesting because the statistic for people who aren't wealthy is very different. So 72% actually of wealthy individuals do that, and only 12 of those of us who are not so wealthy. So that's a big disparity. But I, you know, I like, and every time this comes up, I'd like to think, what else can I do, right? And I'm involved in a lot of different activities. Sometimes Yuri just kind of says, you know, rolls his eyes and says, how can you be doing so many things? But that's just me. That's what I like to do um, because I want to give back. Um, well, one example is, is, for, um, is teaching, so teaching courses, right? Or participating on different boards. Um, those are some things that I'm involved with. Okay, so I challenge you to think about where are you going to volunteer your time. If you have money and you want to do that, that's just, just fantastic as well. Um, I'm sure that's gonna, uh, th that help is going to go a long way. And then finally, right, the last um, habit of those uh, successful wealthy individuals, right, is to find a mentor. And this is something that I've been uh, for sure experimenting myself for quite some time, right? And you can find, you can have mentors all over. It doesn't have to be a specific relationship, right? And I know, Ken, you are um, starting out your uh, coaching practice, right? And so, but mentors are all over wherever you go, right? Because there's always something you can learn from somebody. And remember, I was talking about earlier, how are you connecting with people around you? right? Because there's always something you can learn. But if you have a specific need, right? If you have a specific skill you're trying to develop, or if you have a specific area you want to work on, obviously reach out to people who are going to help you get there. And that's something that I've, you know, taken more advantage as I've gotten older and sort of worked more on my personal development. But there's like, it's just the idea is that you just can't do it yourself. And so, um, you know, what are the, like? Why would you want to connect with somebody, right? And for me personally, it's been it, it's just having somebody who I can I can be accountable to, right? Even for example, in my what, the latest thing that I've tried in my pers uh, in my professional life is, and I don't know if Brian is still here, um, uh, study groups, right? So the there's five of us financial planners. We get together once a week. And just that alone has kind of changed my perception about, okay, what, what are some of the things I have to focus on in my business? Or what are the questions I have to be um, answering or you know, helping answer uh, to, to the rest of the group and showing up, right? Showing up, and that's something to work on more for sure, but showing up and being there. So that's, that's kind of that relationship that I didn't have before, but I, as I gotten into knowing these people and being part of the circle, I actually had to work more on myself. So it, it's, it's an interesting phenomenon. And then, right, I mean, it, as I said, you can't quite do it um, yourself. You ha you, if you wanna get further ahead in life, you've gotta reach out for help. And so sometimes that mentor or that 
um, you know, member of your study group or whoever it is, or a colleague, right, um, could maybe push you over the edge. Um, and that sometimes that that's what we really need to get ahead. Or you can cry on our shoulder, right? So those are the habits that I wanted to discuss with you. You know, they are, as I think more and more, um, and maybe this is a good idea to write a blog on this, but as I think more of this, it's definitely ties in closely to you know, how we approach our finances and some of the things that we do to get ahead. So I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for uh, tuning in. This was a money date and I will see you guys um, next week. Let me know what your money wins are if you're listening on the replay here. I would love to connect with you and uh, stay tuned. Uh, one quick announcement before I hopped off. Um, money flow course i'm figuring out the dates and we'll let you know but this is something that will definitely help you get much further ahead not just having these money dates on wednesdays but actually having a real system that requires virtually no tracking and this is what i want to do tonight when i get home have dinner and just have a quick discussion with my husband about where we stand financially how everything will be paid and accomplished for the rest of the month and we can set our, you know, again, look, look at our goals and set our targets and then just go um, about a day. Thanks for joining, David. We're about to wrap up. I appreciate you guys watching and I'll see you next week. Take care.